Hello, this is Stavadam. In the last episode, we managed to flip quite a lot of materials by doing it every single day. We're going to have a look at our mailbox now and see how we've gotten on. We have spent nearly all of our gold. So last time we had 12,000 gold and we turned it into 40,000 gold. This time we had 40,000 gold. and We're going to see if we've turned that into any more. So let's go have a look at the mailbox. And okay, we have 43. 3,000 gold plus the 1,000 gold here. That is more than we had, not quite the big increase that we had before. But that gold that we did spend has turned into stock. So let's take off all the expires first and foremost, see what we're left with. Okay, there we go. So all of our sales here, we have some monolite ore, whiptail, various small bits and pieces from our group, materials of herbs, cloth and ore that we've been buying cheap and selling for more. So overall 43,000 gold, that's really good. So we'll take up all of that gold, add it to what we had before. So whilst that's not a big increase in the gold that we started the week with, you can see here we have a lot of stock that's still available for us to sell. Now I've added on the add-on bag appraiser here. This is on our Titan panel here at the top. And bag appraiser adds on everything that's in our bags and gives me a total market value based on the TSM market value. So it's adding up everything we have here in our bags ready to sell and according to this the bags are worth 102,000 gold so that's a reasonable amount of gold if they happen to sell for TSM market price. Obviously we'll try and sell them. This is left over from when we we're doing our relic flipping. We've got some mage weave and some rune cloth there. So we're going to see if we can turn that into something more. So let's go over to our auctioning operations and see what we can do posting this on. Now, this time I'm going to also look at my operations a little bit and see if we can do anything slightly differently. The dark times will pass. So with our normal auctioning operation, I run a post scan with all of this. So here we go, we're posting everything on seems pretty reasonable in terms of prices. We do have a number of items here that are all listed here at cheapest auction below minimum price and this is using the operation flipping average buy. So all of these are not being posted for whatever reason at the moment. So what we'll do is we'll post up everything first and then we'll have a look at the operation and see if there's anything we can do to tweak those values in order to get those posted. Okay, so here are all the ones that are left over. So flipping average buy. Let's have a look at that operation. We will have justice. So in the group, this is all towards our commodities flipping here. We look in the operation and under here where the auctioning operation is flipping average buy. And we click on this icon to have a look. And then the information we want is in the posting tab. So we want to have a look here, auction duration, post cap at thousand. And then these are our three prices, the minimum price, the maximum price, and normal price. Now, obviously, a lot of these ones are hitting this minimum price threshold. So looking at this, this is the maximum between 120% smart average buy or 60% of the DB market. So that's the market average for my realm. So let's have a look here at our bags and look at our tooltip here. So... Let's see something that hasn't posted on, say this platinum ore. We have a smart average buy price of 1 gold 26 and a 60% DB market. So this min buyout is obviously a lot lower at 50 silver. Let's look at something else like Briarthorn, that's quite close. Smart average buy price of 4.33, min buyout of 4.50. So I can see why that wouldn't get posted on. Swift Thistle, now this is an interesting one. Wild Steel Bloom. So we have a smart average buy price. So that's the average buy price of the number we've currently got on us, which is seven in our bag. So those seven cost us on average eight gold 99. Now the minimum buyout currently on the auction house database when it was last scanned an hour and a half ago, it tells me 13 gold. So 899, if I would really want to sell this for 13 gold, that seems quite reasonable to me. But as you can see here, the market value is 57 gold. 
and that's quite a bit higher than the, the region average and so that's pushing our numbers higher. So when we look at the TSM auctioning, the min, normal and max down towards the bottom there, our minimum price is 34 gold and that 13 gold is way off of that. But that said, our smart average buy price is only 8 gold 99. So really we would want to be posting these on. So we're going to have to have a change of our minimum price here. So at the moment, we are taking the highest between these two. Now I don't want to change this max to minimum because sometimes 60% TV market will be less than our smart average buy price. And I don't want to do that either because I don't want to sell things for less than I bought them for. So what I'm gonna do here is actually make this a bit simpler. I'm gonna take this max operation and we're just going to leave it at 120% smart average buy. We could maybe even reduce that a little bit to give ourselves some slimmer margins. Maybe if we took that to 115%. So we're taking into account the extra 15% takes into account the auction house fees. So that's just giving us a little bit of a margin there. So now when we look at our wild steel bloom, we can see there we've got a TSM auctioning price. The minimum price is 10 gold 34. Now that's within the two prices between the min buyout, which is 13 gold, and our smart average buy price, which is 8 gold 99. So with that little adjustment, everything else should be okay. We may come across um, the smart average buy price being different than the normal price, but we should be okay in most cases. Let's have a test of it and see what happens. So now when we go to the auction now and we run a post scan, now at least we have a few more, the Monolite Ore and the Wild Steel Bloom, Frost Weave, Corium Ore. So these are all going in at a middle figure. So our, like this, our Eternium Ore, our smart average buy price is 13 gold, currently going on for 34 gold. The market value is 57. True Silver, that's a good margin there. Corium. 241, the market value is really high there, a thousand gold. Frostweed and more wild steel bloom there, and the monolite ore. So those are all good to still go on. The other ones here we'll have to look at in a bit more detail. It could be just that the price we bought them for, like in this case, for the Swift Thistle, two gold 60, is too high compared to the 199 they're currently up for. We'll still have to look at those ones manually. Now let's have a look. Let's post these ones on so that eases our auctioning for the moment. And then let's have a look at these ones here and just see if we can adjust those manually. So the fatted waveling, that seems a good price. We'll just post it straight there, 24 hours. The wind wool cloth, now we bought for 58, it's now 45. Don't want to keep on buying it up at the moment. We have two and a half stacks of it already. This rune cloth, we've got a lot of it. 22 silver is our base price. We've already got some on here, a thousand, so we'll keep that there. Mage weave cloth, if we want to sell this, it's probably gonna to have to be at a loss. Our smart average buy price is 98 silver. So this is way, way below here. We'd have to do a full reset on this. And we've already got a lot of it here. We've got 2,300 of it. So we can either post it on and try for a loss and just try and get some of our money back. When we purchased this, it was 14 days ago, was our last one, two weeks ago. And our last sale was at, well actually our last sale was at one gold 27. So maybe there's an opportunity here. I don't really want to buy all this up though. How much would that cost me? If I was to buy all that, oh, it's not too much actually, 276 gold. But then that would mean we have another 883 made weave cloth. So, Yes, we can afford it. We've got 44,000 gold here, but would end up increasing our stock here of Mage Weave. I wonder how much have we sold? We've actually sold 2,058 of it in total. Now that includes when we were buying and selling with the Mage Weave cloth with the Relic of the Past before Shadowlands came out. Now our last sold is 13 days ago. That could be as low as 28 silver, so not necessarily an average we can hold on to. The region sale average is 33 silver, so I'm not sure we could actually hold that price. Looking at that, 
it would probably stay pretty low looking at that, although average sold is 920. There's a risk here, basically. We either continue buying more stock, which is a bit of a problem because we've already got 2,300. This is another 883 to buy. Whether we can hold that higher price, let's have a look at the Undermine Journal. So we'll go over here, we'll go back to NA, and we'll go on to Lightbringer, and we'll look at Made Weave Cloth. And so this was last reset back in, actually it wasn't too long ago. And then the price is here at 140, then it lasted a little bit and then went back down. Over the last, ooh, let's have a look. Since Shadowlands came out, it's about November the 20th. Let's have a look at this. There have been a few attempts at resets. One, two, three, a recent one there, and it's crashed down again recently here. Quantity is on the lower end at the moment. So it all depends on the demand of it at this point. Given our gold reserves at the moment, and the fact that we've got lots of bank space, we could probably get away with trying this and see if we can sell a bit more stock at a higher price. So I'm going to buy this. Probably going to have to rescan that. There we go. 883. We'll buy that. And then we'll post on ours. And we're going to go for, let's go for our 1 gold 27. And we'll just try it for 12 hours. And we'll put in a 1,000 there and see if we get any sales that way. It's a risk, and um, we may end up with more stock rather than less stock, but you never know if you can sell a thousand of it, that would be useful. Silk cloth is another one we've got at 99 silver. Then the jump price here, it's 5 gold 64. Again, we've got one, two, three stacks of it already. If we were to buy out this lot, that costs us 1,100. And silk cloth can be quite expensive to list as well, so don't want to do the same here. I don't want to keep on buying things. Uh, similar sale rate though. Quite a few average daily sold. So the market value of 114. It does seem to be relatively low at the moment. So what we'll do here, in this case, we'll come in here and we'll post in just a few. It's going to cost us one gold 44. But then if someone does decide to buy out these, then we can jump in here. It's unlikely though, given the number here. Frostweed, we've already got some on. Fireweed, too close there. Rain Poppy, quite an expensive one. 71 silver versus 80 silver. There's not many of them on though. Doesn't have a brilliant sale rate. So we'll post some on here and try and make a few. It's 12 gold you see here. So we might come in with just the 100 there. Sell a few of them. Twilight Jasmine bought for, well, nearly 10 gold, so that's not changed much. Briarthorn's an interesting one, been buying that up for about an average 433, currently 450. There's not a lot of it on here though. That's an opportunity to reset. Obviously, again, we'll be buying some more of it to reset this, but as there's only, that takes us to 454, that's slightly higher than our average, but then no one else has got any on, so. We could probably just post our own on and let's go for a region average of 1147. Let's try that and try a thousand. That way we can at least post them on and see if that works for us at this point. Swift this all. Now that's 199. That is quite cheap. Market value is more 370. Region sale average is quite high. Look at the difference between the, the min buyout, which is 199, and the region sale average, which is 326. Now, region sale average is only the sales that have been tracked through TSM, so it doesn't represent the entire market, but it does represent people who are using TSM to sell, and that is quite interesting. Uh, 326 is higher than this, so we could potentially and there's, oh, there's quite a lot of them though, 1,465 at 199. Again, this is potential, almost 3,000 gold buying that up. The region sale rate is 0.08. Our personal sale rate is quite good at 0.46 and a sold of average of 314. So that's probably worth an attempt. So let's try posting some on for the 
the region average, which is 775. Post on the 25 we have, we'll have to come back to that one. Winter's Kisses, interesting, 82 silver versus mine of 126, that's expensive. And 50 silver for my Platinum Aura, we have a lot of this, haven't managed to sell any of this yet. 1 gold 26 is quite a bit higher than I've been buying, so I may, be, I may have lost out on that market. Looking at that, if I hold shift down, 872 for 200 cost me 400. No, 100 gold for a min buyout. Our total price 1,100 gold. We could have potentially lost that. We may be able to make some of it back. Looking at this adamantite ore, we bought for five. It's currently on for five. Then there's a few more we'd have to buy to get it then to seven. Seven seems to be the region sale average. So again, we'd be buying more. That would cost me another 1,600. We haven't sold any yet though, so I don't know how well this market will work. So I'll leave that one for now. And tin ore, I find a very hard seller, 0.08 sale rate. It's currently 75 silver. There's only 30, 39 of them on. So that's an opportunity to, I know we'd be buying some more, but with only 39 on, we might as well, and then post our own on and try and get the price of that higher, like four gold 96. Let's try that. Okay, so that's all of our bits and pieces posted back on. Now, one of the other things, well, well, hold up, let's do a vendor search just in case. So what have we got here? 20 gold to, turns into 73 gold, yes please. Briny flesh, vendors for six silver, so that's an extra, there's 103 on it, so that's an extra gold. Meaty haunch again. 643 small amounts of silver but it adds up we'll take both of those and then this is 90 gold versus 92 we might as well buy it and 45 gold versus 45 87 so it's very close nothing huge there okay we'll take those and we'll pick up all our purchases more made weave cloth <laughs> This could be a bad hoarding habit we were developing here. Lots of swift thistle as well. Okay, so let's sell some of that to the quartermaster. So the BOEs, that one, that one, and that one. And then these recent ones, all the briny flesh and the meaty haunch will sell. We could have put that back on the auction house, but we'll just go with selling it straight to the vendor for now. So we've got 40,390 gold. So let's go post that on. And with our new adapted auctioning operation, let's have a look, see how that works. So Swift Thistle's fine at 775, Briarthorn's good at 11 gold and 10 at 496. So we'll just up our stock on those. Then everything else we've checked already and we're all good on that front. So that's all done. Now the other thing I have been doing is a shopping scan, which is using DB Market and looking at each of these and going, okay, let's have a look at them. So let's run that now. Okay, so here's my list of items in order of DB market price. And normally what I would do is I'll start at the small ones, usually the stuff in the blue percentages, and have a look. And what I would do normally is I would look at something like this pyrite or look at the min buyout. Then I'd usually compare it with the region sale average. At this I can see is way cheaper than that, that's 33 gold normally, and the market average is 80 gold. So that seems like a very good bargain at that price. So at the 10 gold, I'd definitely buy that one. I would definitely, thinking of my rules, I would go and buy that one. The 30 gold, not necessarily, because the regional sale average is 33, but potentially we could maybe push it up to 43 gold here. Although the market value is pushed up quite, a, quite high. And then I'd normally go through and compare one against the other. So I'm looking at this, the Felwort, and the market value is unusually high, which is why this is so far down in the percentages of 12%, because the market value is so high. So to me, that seems unreasonable in terms of something to buy. So I want to try and think about how I could filter these out and look at this in a different way. So. We have everything listed at the moment. Let's go and have a look at the operation that we've been using for shopping. 
So under our groups, commodities flipping, we have the operation. So we change that flipping average by. Now this one, shop DB market, is what we're doing our search for. So here we are actually just looking at DB market, comparing the price of what's on at the moment, looking at the DB market and returning the percentage of DB market, and then showing me everything above the max price as well. So I get one big list, which is really handy for looking at things manually. But I want to maybe do something a bit different here. So I'm going to make a new shopping operation. And this time I'm going to compare against the DB region sale average. So if I bring my bags up here, the one I'm looking at here is region sale average, 3 gold 26 in the case of Swift Thistle. I'm looking at the min buyout there of 199. So I think, okay, that could be a potential bargain. So what I need to look at is the, what is the figure that I need to put in here? If I type in slash TSM sources in chat, then I can do a look up here and I can see, okay, here we have DB region sale average is the keyword I want to use here to get that figure. And then I'm going to use a function, a comparison function called um, if less than. And you can look up on the TSM website all these different functions for comparing things like if less than, if greater than. They're all logic functions that basically, if one thing is compared against another, do this. Or if that doesn't work out as a valid, do something else. So I'm going to call this one, this operation, let's call it less than sale average. And so the if less than function, so if less than, if LT, basically, the, the way this works is you have four, up to four parameters, you know, three or four parameters, so A, B, C, and optionally D as well. So basically what this means is TSM will compare whatever's in A against whatever's in B. If A is less than B, then do C. Otherwise, do D, or if there is no D, it will return a invalid. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at A, which is going to be the DB min buyout, because that's what we have to compare with. It may be only when we last scanned the auction, which is one hour 52 minutes ago, but it's all we've got at the moment. So, DB min buyout is up here, uh, DB min buyout, and that's the syntax for it. So, if we look at this, and go, it's not case sensitive, so we can just type in db min buyout db min buyout if db min buyout is less than db region sale average then i'd like you to return to me the db market value because we've been looking at the db market value anyway so that gives us a good percentage to look at so now the borders disappeared the red border so now we know that this is a valid statement if less than so if db min buyout is less than db region sale average return DB market. So what I'm going to do is still show auctions above max price. So press enter for that. And then let's uh, assign that to our new commodities flipping. So we'll take out this one shop DB market and we'll replace it with less than sale average. Okay, and now we'll run the scan again. So now we're still getting the DB market percentage returned to us because that's what we've been saying. But we're also getting some dashes here. Now these dashes mean it's returned invalid. So that basically means that the DB min buyout is higher than the DB region sale average. So if we scroll down here, you see some of my auctions are still in here. So these are still worth considering because I have been selling in these markets. You can see obviously I've bumped up the markets on these ones where I've reset them. Okay, so that's the scan done. So we've still got some similar ones we saw here. But what has happened here is all of these ones have been filtered out as things that are this sumptuous fur. The min buyout is 384, which is higher than the DB region sale average. So that's not been included. It filters out things like this fell iron ore, which has a min buyout of 70 gold. That's way higher than even the market value and um, the region sale average. Let's see if we can find one that's more representative Say, for example, this one, this King's Blood, the market value is telling me 77 gold. The min buyout here is telling me 15 gold. But on average, it sells more for 7 gold 36. So that's still relatively high. So that's not actually a bargain looking at that. 
So that's been filtered out, which is useful, but there's still obviously you can see there are options here where we have been able to make some purchases and hopefully make some gold that way. So it's by no means a complete operation. It's just a different way of looking at things. It's a way of just changing your operation based on what you normally look at. And it's making use of logic functions and different price sources to be able to just tailor TSM to how you're thinking in your own head. So looking at this, I'm looking at copper ore, that is 195. That seems a quite a good price because the sale average, region sale average is 355. My average sold is 488. Uh, purchased for 213, obviously during the, the reset days, as we'll call them. But we could, in theory, go from one to three gold here with a reasonable jump. So let's buy out those up to them. And then we're looking for any other things. Usually I look for things in a 50% DB market, which to me represent a relative bargain. That platinum ore, we already have a lot of that already. And we bought it for quite expensive as well. This starlight rose looks interesting. This is a legion herb at 10 gold. 10 gold to 20 gold is a nice jump as well. We could try and go up to 46 gold, but looking at that, the region average is more like 17. So 20 is more reasonable, even though there's only one on there. So I'll buy out the 56 there. Pyrite or was tempting at that. We got the cheap one at 10. Probably not worth resetting it up to 43, although we might get some sales. Looking at that, 30 to 43 is still a reasonable jump. How much would that cost me? 1,200. It's not an unreasonable amount. Let's go for that. Frostweave seems particularly cheap. 25 silver. Are there any reasonable jumps? 25 to 40, then 40 to 50, and then we're up to 93. 50 is the average really, so we would come in here, get the frost weave cloth up to there, and unit average of 32, 32 plus 50, that seems okay. Sea stalk again, that seems quite cheap, 54 silver. Let's try looking at how many we've got here though. One gold, 18 is our average. This is a BFA herb, so people are probably just dumping what they've got here we wanted to buy all of these out take it back up to one gold maybe we would have to spend 867 that's not too much we've got the gold capital here to make these investments and try them out at least so let's try that and see if we can take it up to one gold we've looked at these ones before river bud another bfa one again that's been dropped down oh there's a big amount here at 99 before we jump up to 150 so i would be hmm a lot here at 69 what would it look like if we were to buy those out 627 we'd have to buy those as well probably those on top of that to even get close to this at 88 silver if that didn't work we'd go here at 90 silver so we're comparing 71 silver versus 90 silver trying to sell it for 99 silver where this wall is that's possible it all depends on the price the prices are relatively cheap let's try that there's another one here, Star Moss, another BFA herb. Again, a fair quantity of them as well. Not sure how much to really invest in these, but there are some reasonable jumps. 39 to 52, then up to 57. 99 is the average. We'd have to go all the way up here. That's an extra 1,000 gold for 2,300 stumps. That's a lot of Star Moss. Maybe not at this point. Starlight Rose, bought some of those anyway. The iron ore here, 575. Sinvir ore, that seems quite cheap. There's a lot of it though, 3,000 of it. That's a, a Shadowlands ore, that one. So there's small jumps until we go here to 1786. And that's a lot to buy if you were wanting to jump that up higher. So no for me on that one. Mithril ore, vanilla ore, that's looking quite cheap. Have I sold some before? Yes, I have. Two gold, 65. Purchased for 98 silver. Again, we've got um, the same person dropping themselves down. So they have a lot of stock here and they're just getting cheaper and cheaper. 266 is the cheapest they've gone. So we that would be our average sale price there, 266. If we were to take the 175 and the 195 and the two, that's 1,000 gold for 592. And then we could try selling them there at 266. So we're going an extra half on our gold. That's a possible. I'll buy that one, try that. Anchorweed seems cheap. Cinder Bloom also seems a little bit cheap. Cinder Bloom's relatively harder to get hold of. It's a cataclysm herb, that one. 
I've sold some for 26 gold, so that's quite a bit higher. So that's a good reason to push this up higher, perhaps. Again, we could do a full reset on this market. Four and a half thousand for a full reset, 335. We sold, when did we last purchase it for five gold? And sold 26 gold seven days ago. Four and a half thousand, I think that's worth it. I'll give it a go. Tide spray linen, I'll avoid that for the moment. Okay, then we're getting higher DB market um, values here, so I'm gonna probably ignore those. It would still be worth having a look at any of these. You could probably include some kind of other additional logic function to capture some of these that are particularly cheap. We could maybe add in another one that looked at the percentage of DB market. For instance, if we look at this group at the moment, the operation, shopping, less than sale average. So if DB min buyer is less than DB region sale average, return this. But we've also got another space for doing something else if this becomes invalid. What if we did something else? If we put the common in here, and then if we put another statement in here, another logic function, so another if less than function here, and then we'll put in the two brackets for that. So we'll look at DB min buyout again. We'll compare that, copy that. So this time, so if that if DB min buyout is less than DB original sale average, return DB market. But if not, have a look at DB min buyout again. This time, compare it with say 50% DB market. So if there's been a, a large fluctuation is what we're looking at here. So if DB min buyer has gone below half the DB market price, then I'm also be in interested in those as well. So again, return DB market. That way I, the percentage I see is always the same. So now we've made this a little bit more complicated, but it's basically a nested logic function. So if this is less than this, return that. Otherwise, look at it again. If this is less than this, return the same thing again. Otherwise, return something that's invalid and we're not interested. So we could even turn show auctions above max price and turn that off so we wouldn't even see the invalid ones. At the moment, I like to turn it on just so that we can see how it works. So let's look at that scan again, see if anything else pops up. So that does mean something like life route is coming back in again because our market value is particularly high. So maybe we need to look at this slightly differently. We don't want to look at maybe market value. Maybe we need to look at region market value average because we wanted to filter these out in the first place and we now we've got them back in. So I won't bother carrying on with this scan. So now let's have a look at this operation. Now, instead of comparing it against 50% DB market, let's have a look at another one, which is the DB region market average, the region market value average. So I'll go here, DB region market average. It doesn't necessarily have to be 50%, but that seems a reasonable one. Let's go with that one and try that. Now, hopefully that life route will be filtered out. That's the one we were looking for. There it is, life route. So that is now invalid. So we don't want to look at that because, I'll catch it whilst it's scanning. There we go. So that one we're not interested in because the market value seems too high. So it's, it's in the invalid section. But everything else gives us options here to look at. The wild steel bloom is in there now because the wild steel bloom, even though it's higher there at 13 gold, is higher than the region sale average, we're still potentially interested in that because both the market value and the region market average is less. Obviously this being a high pop server, there are chances are that things are going to be less than the DB region average because that takes into account all servers of all sizes. So I'd expect this to be a little bit lower, but then this gives us a chance to maybe reset some markets that are potentially lucrative here. So a few extras in there, golden sansom, six gold 44, market value is 25. That's a uh, vanilla herb, that one has a sale rate of 0.08. We could possibly take this one from 180 up to there. These two are about to expire, but that's probably okay if we took at this. It's quite expensive. Um, we have sold it for 694 before, so that's on par on average. We have sold it for 720. Our personal sale rate is quite good though, 0.49. So that's worth it. And there's a nice jump here as well. So we'll take that, add that to our list of stuff. And then other things were in here already. Windwall cloth. We could buy some more windwall cloth to help keep our average down. 
So if you buy it at 45, then our smart average will go down slightly because it will include those. Only 70, sale average is 49, so that's only slightly below it. So let's try that, another 31 gold. It's kind of adding to our averages there. Okay, we'll come back another time, 29,000 gold. Still a reasonable amount there. So let's go and collect those up and then we can post them back on. As you can see here, we're building up quite a healthy stock of items. Some potentially more than we can readily sell in any one time, but we'll keep ticking through. As long as we've got the bag space, we're okay for now. Bag appraiser tells me this is worth 47,000 gold, everything that's in my bags. We can have a look at our auctions posted in a moment. So we'll run a post scan with this. Now taking into account our smart average buy price, they should put at least quite a few of these on at a good price, comparing, let's see the copper ore there at five gold is a nice one. Let's try those. And we had checked the other ones manually before. We've already posted these ones before, so that's got the maximum amount. So we're in a good position here, 29,000 gold left. We have 58 posted auctions worth 101,000. We still have 20,000 worth of stock in our bags, looking for opportunities where we might be able to sell them at a different time when the market's changed, or we buy out some more. We'll see how that goes. So there we go, we've changed our auctions a little bit, we've just played around with things, and we've changed our thinking behind how we decide what we're looking for and what criteria we're measuring against. So thank you Stavidan for that. We'll come back in on you each day and see if we can make some more gold over the course of the next week. But for now, we'll say goodbye and we'll see you soon. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to get access to my, all my groups and operations, they are all available on my Patreon, as well as desktop wallpapers and all sorts of goodies. So until next time, happy gold making and I'll see you very soon.